Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of a Malibu Charming 640 LE K. So if we start the walk round on the driver's side of the motorhome first, this switch here operates your step. So your step will go in and out on the step switch. But it'll automatically retract or buzz when the engine is started, which means that you've got to come back up and just press this button and retract your step. You've got some switches there, which I'll go through on inside the van, what they do, but you've also got a full size fly screen on the door. So come across. This black handle is your waste water release handle, so this is anything that you've drained off via a plug hole goes into a separate holding tank. And normally on the way out of your site you would pull over a grid and you just turn it and release your waste water which will come out in the centre of the tank there. But make sure you've fully drained this off in the winter as you wouldn't want the water to freeze in that tank and cause any damage to the tank or the pipework. So release your water in the winter when you're not using the van and we're experiencing colder temperatures. You'll also want to, you don't really need to carry waste water around with you. You get rid of it on the, on the site as it'll impact your payload. So get drain your waste water off when you get the chance on the way out of your site as it means that you'll be better on fuel and you'll have a better payload and you'll not have added weight that you don't need. This is your water filling point, so there's a small key on the keys which will open this cap. And basically all you need to do is get a hose pipe and some hose pipe connections, put the flat end of the hose into here and fill it until it either overflows or until you're happy there is enough fresh water on board the vehicle. But you will need some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on the site. Across the back you've got your high level brake light and your parking sensors across the back bumper. Put your tool kit in there so that includes a jack and a brace and a torn eye, your own and winding handle, some storage in here with some tethering points. Your gas is this side so it holds two six kilogram propane bottles. This is our test bottle that we've got on to show your appliances working and what you would do is when you get the bottle on you position the bottle in to where the straps are. Strap the bottle top and bottom the same way as I do the top one so in at the back hook pull it through then in at the front to tighten it up and you do top and bottom to connect this pipe here which is known as your pigtail it's a left hand thread with it being gas so you'd hand tighten it left to tighten right to loosen and then you'd need a gas spanner like this or an adjustable wrench to take at the final few nips turn the bottle on press the crash valve here which allows the gas through into the pipe and into the regulator which will then take it through the motorhome. Always turn it off before you travel and you can have a spare bottle further back so you just take the pigtail off the empty and put on the full and replenish the empty bottle with a new full one from your local Cala dealer. Just up here underneath the bed this is your fresh water tank so we've filled it from out there this is the tank that you fill. To open it, this is the valve here. So to drain off your fresh water, you can open it three quarters of the way and it'll keep 20 litres in from a full tank. So that me means you're a little bit lighter, but you've still got time to use the toilet or have a cup of tea if you're on a longer journey. Or if you want to drain it off fully, you just turn the valve all the way and you'll see the water come out the outside of the van and you'll want to do that in the winter to stop any water from freezing 
in the motorhome or you can get into good practice of just, just draining it down when you're not using it for a couple of weeks. Always make sure you shut this door first but you can press and make them to go to 160 degrees just make sure if you do fit a bike rack on you don't do that because you can smash the back light. But shut this door first then these but you need to give them a good slam at the back so they get a grip otherwise they will be telling you that your doors are open because you just haven't shut them fully enough. Here you have your Truma vent. So this is your boiler flue for operating on gas. This is your electric connection point. So this is how you charge the motorhome if you were on a site or you were charging it before you went away. So you'd hook it up with the hookup lead, which I'll show you now how to do. So you get your hookup lead, lift and expose the ends, the terminals on the hookup lead, slide it onto the motorhome first, then onto the site and do it in reverse order when unhooking the van so that you're never walking around with a live lead in your hand. Here you have your cassette toilet, so this is the key I'm on about, it says Cathargo. That is your habitation key so that will open the water and the cassette. Press them in. So to get the cassette out the motorhome, you need to position the toilet into place so that you align the cassette up with the hatch which I'll show you more about inside as it shows you a diagram of how to line the toilet up. Then all you need to do is lift the orange handle, slide the cassette out of the motorhome, you can either carry it or you can drag it with the wheels to the waste disposal point, which is beside your toilet block. And then to empty, take the grey cap off, Press the orange button when pouring the cassette out. Pour the content of the cassette out in the disposal point. There's normally a tap there, so you put some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again, and then go in with a cap full, which is 120 ml of either blue or green chemical. Pop that into the cassette, either by the measuring or you can do by eye and just pour it down the spout. And then once it's done, you just push it back into the van and you can use the toilet again. Here you have your diesel, which on this model, it's keyless, so it's got a fob instead of a key. And you might think, how do I open the fuel? Because it's lockable. On the key here, you've got an emergency key. So pull this back, pull that out, pop that in here. Twist, open your fuel, fill with fuel, lock your fuel cap and pop the key back in to here. Underneath you've got AdBlue, so it's a 19 litre tank on a Fiat Ducato and it'll do five and a half thousand mile off a full 19 litres. But once you've covered 4,000 mile and you've got 1,500 mile left, you'll get a warning which is AdBlue low and it's just time to top it up. You can either go to the pump and buy it on the pumps, it's about 150 a litre, or you can buy it in the drums, and you can fill it, and once it starts overflowing, the AdBlue is full, and you'll get another five and a half thousand mile off the AdBlue range. Tire pressures are here, so five and a half bar, which is 79.5 PSI. Underneath the seat, you've got your electric block unit so this has got all your 12 volt fuses in for your various items so do carry some spare fuses with you as this controls all the habitation 12 volt system underneath this compartment is where the engine battery lives so if you've ever got to change it in years to come or you want to put a charger on just get a screwdriver and turn these lift this cover off and you'll get the top of the battery and you've got the bonnet release on the side of the dashboard
to this side you've got your screen wash which is the main one you're going to need then you've got this cover so if you release these three pins you can fill your coolant there is no power steering fluid as it's not a rack and a pin system anymore it's an electric steering rack so you don't have any hydraulic fluid brake fluid oil filler the dipstick is electronic on the dashboard there isn't one in here anymore on the new fiat decato this is your pain code sticker so 632 for the nero alum black metallic this is where you'd earth if you were given or receiving a jump start as the engine battery is underneath the carb floor and then for your positive between the air filter and the back of the headlight in this cover here lift this up and this is your positive so red on there black on there for giving or receiving a jump start then you've got your weight plate here above the door you've got your control panel so this is your 12 volt panel if you are hooked up you'll get this light on here which means that you are receiving 230 volt which is mains voltage so you can use all three pin plugs around the van if you're not then you'll just have 12 volt off your leisure battery you turn the panel on here so this is known as your master switch then you can turn the radio on and off here and it'll use the leisure battery to operate the radio in the front and it also if you're fitting a telly you need to turn this on as the power points over here if there's any are worked off this master switch down the side you've got starting at the top you've got the battery at the back of the van this is your leisure battery voltage reading take the hook about and you'll get a true reading of the battery underneath you've got your fresh water reading underneath that you've got your waste water reading which is not lighting up at the moment because it's empty and then at the bottom you've got the vehicle battery voltage reading to operate your heating and hot water on the Truma CP digital control panel you would press and hold to turn it on and off a long hold press it once to get into the menu and you've got a motor home with a thermometer flashing in the left hand corner this is how hot you want the inside of the motor home to be so in the summer when it's too hot outside you'll not want the heating on inside but then in the winter you may want it all the way up to 30 degrees but once you're happy with the temperature all you need to do is press enter and save it at that temperature moving on you've got your water so a thermometer in some water so making sure that you've got water in the boiler and you've got water on board first you can then heat your water so it's 10 litres at a time and you've got eco which is 40 degrees of heating your water hot which is 60 degrees of heating your water or boost which will turn off the heating and prioritize the hot water first so for this we'll just say hot and it'll do the heating and hot water together obviously boost would turn the heating off and prioritize the water if you are in a rush for hot water moving along to the third symbol at the top you've got a gas bottle and some electricity signs this is what source you're physically going to use to heat the vehicle or the water or both if you've got them both on so you've got gas which you'd use if you're wild camping making sure that your gas cylinder's turned on you've got mix one which is one kilowatt of mains voltage 230 volt and gas you've got mix two which is two kilowatts of electric and gas you'd use this if you are in a desperate need of heating the water or if you're away in the winter and you want the motor home to temperature quick use mix two for the first 10 15 minutes then you'll want to turn it off mix two and then use electric because you've paid your site fees so you've got al1 which is electric one kilowatt which is equivalent to 750 watts so if you've used if you've paid to be on a site use their electric as much as possible and then you've got EL2 which is 1500 watts of mains electric so you normally use that on most camping and caravan and club sites throughout the UK EL1 maybe when you're abroad if you're on a smaller CL site fan in the top right hand corner so you've got eco high or boost eco is just a 
takes a smaller feed of 12 volt because it's a 12 volt assisted fan and it's quieter on a night. High obviously uses a little bit more fan speed and then Boost will use all the fan speed and boost the heat around the ducting part of the vehicle. In the bottom corner you've got a timer so you can time it to come on and off. You can set the time on the main display panel. So when the clocks go back and forth you can change the time on here. And then should you get a warning triangle here what you can do is you can go to the setting which is a spanner, go to reset, press enter, press preset and it will restart this control panel so you'd go in and set the temperature, the, the water, the energy source and the fan speed all again and then finally to turn off like I said at the start just a long hold and it'll turn it completely off so that you don't have any power to this screen. In the kitchen area you've got two gas rings so using a little piezo ignition making sure your bottle's on you've got two Lid gas rings. So make sure they're turned off and they're hot and they're cool enough to touch before you put your glass lid down, otherwise, you can shatter the glass. If you haven't got a pump on this, it just activates on the micro switch of each tap. So that is your hot water and your cold water system working. Three pin plug there. And you've got your sink cover, cutlery tray which is built into the drawer, so you've got a large drawer there, push the catch in, and then you've got the deeper drawer at the bottom for your pots and pans. You've also got in the top one two gas taps, one for the fridge and one for your hob so if there's any problems with gas you can isolate it here but you'd mainly just turn the bottle off to be safe these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced also in the kitchen you've got this cabinet here so you can store in there some spare worktop preparation space and then underneath you've got your fridge so your fridge is a compression fridge so it works only off 12 volt Obviously just make sure you've got a fully charged leisure battery or if you're going to a site you don't need to worry because you're charging your 12 volt battery so your fridge is just drawing off the battery. So you turn it on and off here. So that's it off. That's it on. You can scroll up and down the temperature so 5 when pre-chilling. When you put your shopping in just drop it down to 3 or 4 because sometimes it can freeze the fridge. And then you've got nighttime mode here which just lowers the decibels of the fridge so that it's not as loud. Finally what you want to do with the fridge is when you're not using it you want to wipe it out and you want to leave the door open because it forms, it's got rubber on and it forms an airtight seal and it'll trap the smell in the fridge and then the motorhome will start smelling. It'll get a funky smell in the van. So what you need to do is just a little blue clip, put that into the middle, turn the fridge off and just rest the door upon it. You can see there that the door doesn't shut, it's loose. It allows air circulation in and out the fridge to stop any smells and mold growing in the fridge. So in the toilet area, your toilet is a foldable toilet. So it'll fold away, which means you can put this down, reflect the water off the top of the toilet and you get a bigger space to have a shower. But to get the toilet in and out, what you need to do is turn this here, pop your foot underneath this little black tab pedal and you can slide it and you'll notice on the top it tells you the different positions. So position A, position B to empty and position C to use. So when you want to empty the toilet you've got to put in position B to remove the cassette which is around there so that the back of the toilet is square with the hatch and you can pull it straight out and then you can store it away in position A when you use the shower but to use the toilet physically all you need to do is 
There's a little blue button down here, which is your flush button. So make sure you've got water in. Flush the toilet with a small amount of water first. And then before you use the toilet, you want to get rid of that water because that water is only designed to lubricate the seal between the top of the blade and the cassette. So this grey handle here, you'd slide that to the right. You can now see in the cassette, you'd use the toilet. After you've used the toilet, you'd give it a good flush. You'd use some bowl cleaner, fed fed designated bowl cleaner or the pink, dilute that in a spray bottle, spray if you've bought the blue and the pink together it'll give a nice fragrant smell, it'll clean the bowl then what you want to do is you want to close the blade which is this hatch here so lever, slide it back to the left then you can store the cassette away or leave it in position but once the cassette is full it will indicate underneath here with a couple of lights to say that it's full and it's time to put the cassette or should I say, put the toilet in a position where the cassette will come out and empty the cassette and replenish it with chemical. You've got your shower head here, that clips on there. When winterizing, it's always good practice to unscrew the shower head from the hose so no water sits in here and lie the hose in the shower tray. Leave all your mixer taps open throughout the van. You've got your bathroom light there, some storage, some storage in here, a complimentary bottle of blue. concertina door which shuts when showering and then your main bathroom door which slides along there and then you just push push the catch down to open the door back up you also got a toilet roll holder under there as well next to the flush button one last thing this is shiny white don't use any harsh chemicals on anything in here just use soapy water and a microfiber cloth so that you don't damage the finish of the white plastic shower tray or shower cubicle because sometimes over time if you use harsh chemicals it'll start to go yellow and then you need to get it sprayed so use just soapy water a mild spray just to wipe it down at the back of the van you've got twin single beds this way or you can sleep across the van and you've got a double it's up to you with your porthole windows on either side and this is one fixed blind on both windows so you've got blackout blind fly screen release the catches to open and then to lock the window out for ventilation you just turn this black knob release the black knob to pull the window in step here which is removable so your step can come in and out so you've got on here you've got two little holes so you've got two holes here you need to line the holes in the box up with those and then you've got two fittings push them through and tie them in and you can lock this into place obviously you can remove this if you want to put a larger item in the back when you fold the beds up and you've got some storage in here as well but you just tighten them in and that will make it secure for travelling with this in place to this side of the bed, if you lift it up, you've got your wardrobe. Your own and winding handle does come into your wardrobe as it's stored underneath the back bed. So you can get from the top and hang your clothes, or you can open the door at the front and you can access your clothes. It's entirely up to you. But you've got both ways of getting in to there. And then you just slide this back down and it'll form extra for the bed. If you lift up the other bed, on the other side, behind the washroom, you've got storage here. This little compartment, you can lift it up for access, service access to the back of the toilet and the water pipes fed to the toilet. 
in here you've got your trips so if you've tripped the van try here before you try your main site but you've got your main trip tester and your MCBs this is just access for servicing the boiler so that's the top access you, you don't really need to touch this one but if you want to store bed and clothing in there in here gets lovely and warm because the boiler's underneath What you can also do is, there's a strap in the back cupboard to strap this bed up as it's not on gas struts like this one is. And you can use it for picking larger items up or putting your bikes inside. By removing the step like I've shown you, then you just lift these bars out. But make sure you put the two bars back in as they hold the strength across the bed from either side. Because if you didn't put them in, you would damage the beds with the weight so pop them on it bears the weight better but you've also got down here access to the front boiler so in here is access to the boiler but you've got to remove the step first which is heated in your garage area so You push that forward, you'll be able to open this door. There's your boiler. This is known as your boiler drain down valve, which is an anti frost controlled valve. So when this valve detects three degrees, the little blue button on the bottom will pop out, which means that it will drain off the content of 10 litres that's in this boiler out underneath the van. But I wouldn't rely on it because if it ever becomes faulty over time you're in for a big repair bill if the water is frozen in the boiler. So when it gets to winter from anywhere from October to March, start of April depending on how bad our winters are, you want to drain it down. So you want to drain the boiler down, you want to drain the fresh water off and you want to drain the waste off. You, want, you then want to open all the taps within the van so no water can sit in any pipelines and cause any air locks. But to do the boiler manually, all you need to do is turn this, you see the blue buttons popped out, and you'll see the black nibs popped out on the diamond. That's draining off the water now out underneath the van. When you come back to it, all you need to do is turn the diamond side to side and push the button in, and that is the boiler then closed. You'd also open this valve here, which is your hot water line drainer, so you drain the hot water lines. But when you do come back to it to use it and you turn this and the button keeps popping out what, what's best to do is just put the hot just put the space heater on first for the first 10 minutes this boiler gets warm it'll heat this valve up and then you'll be able to push the button in and it'll stay in and then you'll be able to fill it with water from outside but you'd Close your fresh new waste off first, fill it with water via a hose pipe. Shut all your taps, then open your taps inside the van with the control panel on. Go to the cold side first, you'll get an automatic flow of cold water. Start to go to the hot, it will cough splutter because it's transferring the water from the tank over here into here until you get 10 litres in here and then it's, you're good to go and your system is primed. But make sure you drain off your water in the winter otherwise you're in for an expensive repair bill and it's not covered under warranty so with this van being keyless just place the keys in your pocket and all you need to do put your foot on the brake and press this button here and that'll start and that beep is just to say that you're hooked up so do not move So, to work the van, this is the new dashboard, so you've got a, a volume button behind this one, 
and you've got to skip the track behind this one. You've got all your cruise control here, so cruise, limiter, set, accelerate, decelerate, cancel and resume if you've pressed the brake or if you've cancelled it off you can resume it to the last speed that was set. Wipers, this is your frequency so that you, you go up for one single wipe to keep them on all the time you turn the end of the stalk. Lights are here and indicators on that one. This goes through the screen here. So you can go through the screen and you can look at the settings. So you can go through the bar at the bottom, go through the display settings, home, which gives you a digital speedometer, your trips, your cooling temperature, your serve, and then you can go up and down on the, the vehicle information, the service, the add blue level. So once that starts going down, it'll tell you then time to top up or you might do it before the light if you keep checking on your levels the battery charge the oil life and the oil temperature and the oil level because there's no dipstick with the oil so you've got to check it man um, digitally now you can also script through your radio tracks and your sat nav if you've set the sat nav off it's all through here on along the bottom this one's a 9 speed auto, so press the button and you can go through the different gears or you can go through modes which is eco normal or power. Just leave it in normal, you do have the kick down function of dropping the gear and it'll start picking speed up or you can keep put, put it into power mode. That'll just keep the revs higher and hold the gear longer or eco, it'll save a little bit of fuel. You might want to get onto the motorway and then drop it into eco, it's entirely up to you to save fuel. This one locks all of the doors on the van, you've got your heated mirrors, your hazards, on and off with the radio and volume, hill descent control and traction plus, so if you're stuck on wet grass put that on and it'll stop the wheels from spinning, that'll help you out. USB for the radio and cup holders and then you've got two USBs here, one being the new USB-C and the standard conventional USB for charging along with the 12 volt. This is your air conditioning, so temperature, fan speed, off, recirculation, aircon, where you want the air to go to, face, feet, screen, just skips through all three as you can see there. Max aircon, max demist and auto which will just, which will circulate and know what temperature and fan speed to put it on. This is a new Uconnect head unit, so you can customise the driver to yourself, put different pictures, names, customise your profile. Sat nav, which comes with the Uconnect, is this one here. So you can click on nav, and then you can search your address, postcode, name, you can see that you've got park and petrol stations, food, restaurants, all sorts in there. If you want to find something locally, you can add home and add work. Or you can just view the map. Media, you've got your radio, so FM, AM, press 1, 2, 18 to save all your presets of your favourite channels. And you can just skip through the tracks there or browse the stations. Or of course you can connect Bluetooth or USB. This is your aircon, shows on the screen as well as down here. So all your air conditioning, your temperature. Connect your phone, you've got the phone. No phone connected. Do you want to connect a phone? You'd press yes. And you'd search for phone and it'll start searching for 
phones nearby so you'd go on your phone and go into Bluetooth and find so they find each other. Press pair on your phone or pair on here, whichever one comes up first. And then it'll ask you if you want to allow your contacts to be saved, just press allow. And then if you use an iPhone or a especially iPhone, this is iPhone uh, Apple CarPlay ready. So what you can do is it'll say, do you want to use CarPlay? Press yes. And then you can use your maps, um, your music and everything. So your phone screen, it'll image from here onto there. So you'll have your Apple Music, your Spotify, your Apple Maps, Google Maps, Waves, all your apps that you use on your phone that are, can be used when driving will be on there and accessible to you. And then you can press vehicle and you can view your trips.